Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 9 for November the 1st, 2020. We begin a new unit today, Unit 3, entitled Godly Love Among Believers. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is entitled Upside Down Love. Our devotional reading is taken from the Gospel of John, Chapter 15, and verse 18, and also um, chapter 16, verse 4a. Our background scripture is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 35. And we'll be studying today from uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 13, uh, verses 1 through 15, and verses 34 and 35. Our key verse reads, I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. As taken from uh, John chapter 13, verse 15 from the King James Version. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to consider the significance of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. Secondly, to repent of pride that has prevented your serving selflessly. And then thirdly, to serve others as an expression of Christian love. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, A Reversal of Roles. Our second outline is entitled, Misunderstanding and Rejection of Roles. And then the third outline is entitled, A New Kind of Love. And so, as always, we thank and praise God for yet another opportunity to be able to share our Sunday School lesson with you. We thank God for keeping us each and every day, even through this pandemic. And just know, saints, uh, that we are continuing to pray for you. We are continuing to pray for your families. And we are continuing to pray for our circumstances as they change minute by minute. We certainly I uh, want to be able to continue to uh, keep our first responders in prayer, those who are uh, actively engaging um, in the preservation of life. We certainly are praying for our leadership that we might be guided in a way. And we certainly want to continue to pray for all of those of the household of faith, uh, that your faith fail not. And it's important that we continue to engage in God's word, that we might be strengthened. Uh, in the inner man and we won't uh, keep you long today what we want to begin to get into uh, our lesson today that we might be able to understand this passage of scripture that we know so well and we also want to encourage you to uh, get your Bible and we uh, encourage you to be prepared to uh, take some notes uh, and we want you to study uh, God's Word. Um, uh, study with us, read with us, uh, follow with us, that we might be able to be uh, encouraged together. But I want to read some of this biblical context for this lesson that's taken from our quarterly, and then we're going to get into this, uh, into these outlines. But the Gospel of John can be divided into two distinct sections. The first half deals with seven signs or miracles that identify Jesus as God in the flesh. The second half focuses on his substitutionary death and provisions for his church. Uh, John chapter 13 through chapter 17 contains uh, Jesus' farewell message to his disciples and climaxes uh, with his intercessory prayer for them. Uh, and us. Uh, in these chapters, John recorded Jesus' instruction about what his disciples could expect uh, after his death. So in chapter 13, he provides three significant events prior to Jesus' death uh, and resurrection the institution of the Lord's Supper, the washing of the disciples' feet, and his prediction of his betrayal by Judas Iscariot. The washing of the disciples' feet was a sermon in action and was designed to teach and model humility 
and true servant leadership. I would also mention that uh, to really focus on Jesus as servant uh, you might want to study the Gospel of uh, Mark. Uh, he presents uh, Jesus uh, ministry as a servant and we want to be able to um, take that concept away. We're going to certainly drive that point home today. and We're going to just talk about this passage of Scripture today uh, as we get into this first outline uh, a reversal of roles. This is taken from John chapter uh, 13 verses 1 through 5. And the Bible says, uh, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were uh, in the world, he loved them unto the end. Verse 2. And supper being ended, the devil having put uh, now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, uh, and that he was uh, come from God and went to God. Verse 4 He riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. After that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Thus conclude the reading of our first outline and we want to talk about this um, this upper room discourse that starts in John chapter 13 as we said and extends to John chapter 17 uh, but I, I think that it's important to know uh, to understand the setting uh, of this um, passage of scripture here this Passover uh, this feast of the Passover uh, the Jewish people of Jesus day saw the Passover as one of the most important annual feasts it commemorated the Exodus events when the Lord passed over the homes of the people of Israel that were obediently marked with blood on the doorposts and lintels of their homes. I want you to look at Exodus chapter 12 verse 27 and also Exodus chapter 7 verse 23. Uh, the unmarked Egyptian homes suffer the final of the ten plagues death of the firstborn that's in Exodus chapter 12 verses 29 and 30 uh, this led Pharaoh to relent and allow the people of Israel to leave Egypt and its oppression uh, that's in Exodus chapter 12 verses 31 and 32 so then Passover had both spiritual and physical themes for Jewish people like Jesus and his disciples which likely resonated harshly because of the oppression of the Romans in Jerusalem and all over Judea. And I want to just uh, hone in on this, uh, this setting, this foundation as the basis of our understanding of, of why uh, our attitudes, if you will, of service, of Christian service. Why do we serve? What, what what do you think about? Uh, what 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 uh, 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 what do you engage uh, as a means of? Uh, why do you serve in the manner that you do? And if you haven't or you haven't engaged in Christian service, uh, but yet the Lord has saved you, I want you to understand that this is the very basic concept of why we serve. We serve we because we have been served. Uh, uh, we serve uh, with humility because as we are looking at uh, uh, this uh, annual feast, this Passover, and I don't want us to miss the fact that what has happened to Israel in the past uh, as it relates to this Jewish uh, uh, feast, this Passover, this Passover has happened to all of us, uh, uh, if I can put it to you this way we all have been saved by the blood 
in their case it was the blood of the lamb in in our case it was the blood of the uh, unblemished lamb of Christ uh, but we all have benefited from uh, the blood uh, we all have benefited from uh, the sacrifice of that blood we have all benefited from the fact that we should have been uh, uh, killed or we should have died died uh, but the Lord because of that blood uh, uh, we had this Passover in our lives and so I hope that as we think about uh, uh, this passage of scripture and why it's essential that Jesus is teaching this principle to disciples who should understand where he is coming from uh, and, and it's important to to note here uh, that we have to learn this concept uh, we must become humbled if we are not we must become a uh, 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 people of God that 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 we are grateful because we have been served by the the blood of the lamb because we have been served by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and it puts us in an attitude uh, whereby we serve and this is the foundation of this passage of scripture and I didn't want to just pass over this if you will uh, 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 over this this foundation why this Passover festival was critical uh, 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 in Jesus day and it is critical for us this is the very foundation uh, of our faith and so we want to be able to appreciate this but Jesus knowing uh, uh, that that his time is short and so we understand that uh, farewells are difficult especially uh, when they involve being left by or leaving those we love. So John chapter 13 begins Jesus' farewell discourse to his disciples before the Passover feast and was designed to prepare them for what they would face without his comforting physical presence among them. So on this frightful, fateful night, Jesus was acutely aware that his death and resurrection were imminent. The sacrifice is imminent. And so he had come from the Father to die in obedience to his Father's will. And now it was time to return to the Father to be glorified. I just want to make sure that we understand here that uh, the sacrifice is still in play, uh, if you will, if I can use that term. That sacrifice is still a, a point of emphasis in this lesson or in these lessons that Jesus is teaching his own. This sacrifice is, 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 is still a focus uh, of, of, of Jesus' uh, uh, expectations of his disciples. And we have to keep this Passover uh, uh, it keeps us grounded. Uh, and, and so uh, Jesus took this opportunity here. Uh, the Bible says in verse 4 that he got up from this last supper. He took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. Uh, and after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples feet drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him but the disciples don't understand why uh, why he's doing this and sometimes we don't understand why we serve that's why I asked you earlier about what your mindset uh, was and so this teaching here uh, this example is putting the disciples in a framework in a mental mindset where they can they can visually see what sacrifice looks like uh, uh, they can see what these teachings look like so this was clearly a reversal of roles and established protocol because not even a Jewish slave would have been asked to do it their master was visibly assuming the role of a slave and kneeling before them because uh, their soiled feet washing their soiled feet so this preparatory steps uh, were an additional lesson in themselves his actions 
show that his followers, especially leaders, must divest themselves in uh, of self importance and humbly allow love to motive that motivate them to serve rather than be served. So you get some idea of what I'm getting at here uh, in terms of our mindset that we must give of ourselves. And so what I love about the uh, the gospel according to uh, Mark that I referenced earlier to you was that it demonstrates that Jesus came to serve, uh, uh, not to be served. And we have to position ourselves in a, in, a, in a way in our minds and in our spirits and in our hearts. And I like this here that it, it introduces this kind of love to motivate them. And so we have seen uh, uh, the mountain of love that God has for us that he would sacrifice that he would give his only begotten son uh, uh, to shed his blood and give his life for as a ransom for our sins but look at the son now he didn't come uh, uh, in pomp and circumstance he didn't come with all of the glit and the glamour of, of, of what royalty should come in but he came humbly uh, he came to serve. He came to visit, visibly illustrate, to demonstrate to his disciples what Christian service looks like. It doesn't matter who we are per se, but it matters how we serve. It matters that we give of ourselves. It matters that we that we uh, uh, take the back seat, if you will. And so this is important as a foundation. And we do that not because we are, are, are in denial about who we are and what we have accomplished. And by all means, we, we certainly want to applaud all of the the, the credentials and, and everything else that we have obtained and, and, and the labor that you have gone, that God has blessed you to go through and obtain all of these different things. But when it comes to Christian service, we have to learn how to stand down uh, uh, and, 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 and not be uh, ashamed that the light is not shining on us, but it is shining on others. Uh, uh, and so we need to take this into account. Uh, that this was a visible, a visible demonstration of his love and affection for his disciples, like that of washing, uh, uh, of a wife washing her husband's feet, or children washing their parents' feet. So Christ's standard for servanthood flips the script. He expects his followers to voluntarily assume the role of servants motivated by a love that seeks the highest good for others despite how they are treated. Remember, Jesus washed Judas' dirty feet too. So this is where we have to con continue to allow the Lord to help us to understand that, that, that it is critical that we think about others, that we think about where uh, uh, others may be in their walk with the Lord. But Jesus took the time as he approaches the end of his life to teach valuable lessons to his disciples. Granted, they don't understand why he's doing it yet. But he is going to to explain things in a way or he's going to break it down for them where they understand uh, because right now it doesn't look like he should be doing uh, uh, what he's doing. He being Christ and sometimes it's like that. Uh, uh, we think that uh, uh, we don't have to get our hands dirty. Uh, uh, we think that we don't have to go where others may be in, in, in low places. And we think that we don't have to touch those who have been contaminated or stained by the sinfulness of this world. But we have to roll up our sleeves and we have to literally be willing to make the sacrifices for those who have not come to a uh, uh, full term, if you will, who have not come into a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. Remember earlier uh, uh, this Passover. Don't ever forget this Passover because uh, this is something that I think that we 
we miss sometimes and we we always talk about who we are in the body of Christ but salvation is huge the fact that uh, 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 there was blood over your life that you are still here that the blood of Christ saved you uh, 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 from who you were and where you were and and you have been allowed to escape you know this is an endless testimony that that we should never ever let die we are saved no matter what we do rather we are a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord or we are sitting in a rostrum we are we have been saved we have been brought into the family of God we have been brought into a relationship with Jesus Christ and that simply did not have to be but by the grace of God we have come a long way question is asked here how can titles get in the way of humbly serving others and we shared that earlier and so uh, we live in a culture where uh, uh, we we want the finer seats we want to sit at the top we want to sit in under the light uh, but we fail sometimes to roll up our sleeves and get involved with those who need us the most society is screaming out uh, uh, every day uh, for us to 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 make a contribution uh, 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 we can always give of ourselves uh, we can always give back we can always keep an attitude or grateful attitude uh, to share our faith with those who may not have Christ as their centerpiece but we want to dig a little bit further here in this second uh, 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 outline here uh, misunderstanding and rejection of roles this is taken from John uh, chapter 13 verses 6 through 15 and I want to read this from the NIV translation verse 6 he came to Simon Peter who said to him Lord are you going to wash my feet Jesus replied you do not realize now what I am doing but later you will understand verse 8 no, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Verse 10, Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean though not every one of you verse 11 for he knew who was going to betray him and that he and that is why he said not every one of you was clean verse 12 when he had finished washing uh, their feet he put on his clothes and returned to his place do you understand what I have done for you he asked them you call me teacher and Lord and rightly so for that is what I am verse 14 now that I your Lord and teacher have washed your feet you also should wash one another's feet verse 15 I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you and so we want to start to unpack all of this uh, washing of the feet and I'm sure as you have heard, uh, uh, as I have over the years, there are many applications uh, to uh, this kind of uh, teaching here. Uh, but we should understand in a way uh, that, uh, that Jesus is, is teaching something here uh, that his disciples uh, 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 did not understand. So we should understand that... Uh, foot washing was a filthy job. Uh, Jerusalem was a hot uh, and dusty city. People either wore sandal type shoes that allowed dirt uh, in easily or walked barefoot without any protection because they walked almost everywhere people frequently stepped in mud and, un and other undesirable uh, things on the streets and pathway so a good host would provide guests with a servant to wash their feet. Uh, this foot washer was the lowliest or the lowest of the household servants 
who likely took no pleasure in such a demeaning task. So it was this dirty job that our Lord Jesus chose to illustrate what it meant to be a servant in his service. This filthy job. Why would Jesus do this? I want you to, uh, I'm going to give you some scripture here. I want to read something here. The meaning of the Lord's action. The Lord's washing of the disciples' feet. Number one, it illustrates the believer's continual need of cleansing after the once for all bath of regeneration. A person who has had a bath needs only to uh, only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. He was talking to Judas uh, being unregenerate. The figure is of a person returning from a public bath to his home. His feet will become defiled. So the believer is once for all cleansed in the bath of regeneration. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter uh, 10 verses 1 through 12. But must confess the sins involved in his daily walk in a sinful world. I also want you to look at Ephesians chapter 5 uh, verses 25 through 27 and also the uh, first epistle of John uh, chapter 1 verse 9 but a defiled saint cannot have communion with Christ that is why Peter had to have his feet washed so the command in verse 14 involves the exercise of the spirit of forgiveness of one saint toward another and I also want to give you Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 so so what we're sharing with you there are times and we know that we are saved uh, we know that we are set apart we know that we are filled with the Holy Spirit and all of these things but there are times when we do things that we should not do that we walk into situations that we should not have walked in. In other words, we, 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 we get dirt on our feet, or on our walk. We get dirt uh, 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 on our talk. We get dirt on our lifestyle and what we do. We go to God, as, uh, as those scriptures will illustrate, and we ask for his forgiveness. Now, if you keep on reading the first epistle of John, chapter 1, if we say we haven't committed any sin, then John says we, we, we lie and the truth is not in us. We know we have done things, and so this is why the Lord is, is washing his disciples' feet. But, but Jesus is also teaching something else, and we want to uh, uh, touch on that uh, at, before we move forward. But uh, 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 while the other disciples sat in embarrassed silence, the outspoken Peter was not at a loss for word. He and the others had not fully grasped the role Jesus was to perform while on earth. Uh, they, they were looking for a liberating military Messiah and not the suffering uh, uh, Messiah. So Peter's question reflects his misunderstanding. Jesus was their master and the divine king Disciples were expected to wash their master's feet. Jesus' action was inappropriate, was an inappropriate protocol and unheard of in Jewish culture. So Jesus' reply in verse 7 uncovered, un uncovered uh, Peter's ignorance of his purpose for washing their feet, but indicated that later uh, he would understand that uh, he had come to serve and willingly give his life as a ransom for many. And let me just pause right here and just take you back a bit to this Passover. All of the people, if we look at Israel at the time of this Passover, in um, Exodus chapter 12, and they were instructed to put this blood on their doorposts that the destroyer or the death angel would pass over them and spare them. But let me just say this about those in that house. 
they are not worthy of what they have received. You and I, in our culture, in our day, we have been saved. We have, we have blood figuratively on our doorposts, right? We have it on our lives. We've been sprinkled with the blood of Jesus Christ. And so we have been allowed uh, to experience this Passover that the Lord spared us. He saved us. But again, like Israel, those that are in that house that are saved are not worthy. Uh, and, 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 and we have brought all of our filthiness to Jesus Christ. If you think about that for a minute, the cup that he was carrying, Christ, the cup of our sinfulness that was running over with all of our filthiness. And he came into this world, he Christ, and took on all of our filthiness. Every saint's life, lifestyle, every saint's deeds, every saint's conduct, every saint's attitudes, every act that you and I committed in the past, that we have committed present day, and that we might commit in the future that we might need our feet washed and this Christ this Messiah has accepted all of our filth and he has washed us all right but we are not worthy of this and so Jesus is teaching something here I have set an example so in other words if, if, if Christ is saying, if I can wash your filthiness, you ought to be able to wash others' filthiness. In other words, we ought to be able to forgive one another of our transgressions. We ought to be able to let it go. Why is it so difficult for saints of God to forgive one another when we have had our feet washed? Uh, uh, and if I could just paraphrase we've had our feet more washed more than once right because we've gone contrary time and time again but God said I'll forgive you all I need you to do in the first epistle of John chapter 1 is confess your sins and the Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and then cleanse us from our unrighteousness so as we read to you earlier about this spirit of forgiveness this is where it's founded it's founded in the fact that this Messiah continues to hear our prayers God continues to answer our prayers though we are not worthy when we ask God to have mercy upon us do you know what we are saying we're asking God to pity our situation we're asking God to let it go don't hold it. Forgive us. Rescue us again and again and again. So this is the example. God says, okay, I forgave you and I'll forgive you. And so this is the attitude. This is the basis whereby we forgive and so wash one another's feet. This is the example that Jesus is teaching his disciples. And this is what they don't understand at this time. But, you know, as we stay on in this journey, there are times where we need to forgive one another. We need to wash someone's feet. There are times when we need to love someone. There are times when we need to uh, 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 let, let, let that thing go. Uh, uh, and so wash one another's feet. This is the continuous example that we have to show because uh, we're getting it all the time right we're getting this kind of washing all the time we go into our secret closets and we ask God to forgive us and you know he cleanses us from that thing and so this is what we have to continue to to do this is what Jesus says in verse 15 I have set you an example that you should do who should you do this to right that's the next question why would you show me an example, Jesus, and who should I do or who should I exercise this example with? 
Well, the conclusion would be to our brothers and sisters in Christ, to our to the world, right? Uh, uh, and if we don't do that, then we're missing the Passover. We're missing the fundamentals of what Passover means. Because all of us should be able to reflect on the fact that if it had not been for the for the Lord who was on your side, you wouldn't be here today. But Peter reasoned that Jesus washing their feet was the condition of their relationship and desire to be totally washed. Jesus explained that those who had already uh, bathed did not need to be bathed again every time uh, their feet got dirty they only needed to wash their dirty feet because they otherwise or otherwise completely clean Jesus was teaching that the spiritual cleansing of the redeemed at salvation does not have to be repeated in other words you don't need to be saved again right but all that is needed is the daily cleansing from the defilement of sin dwelling within and we all have it right we all have it we all uh, 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 experience it we all are tempted and sometimes we overstep so you don't you're already saved right but you do need to get forgiveness of that defilement uh, this is what repentance is for and so when we commit that act that offensive act uh, not uh, just against God but against his holy nature and we ask God to forgive us of that thing then he cleanses us of that thing and we should understand that that type of uh, 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 conduct we know that it breaks that fellowship that sinful conduct breaks fellowship with the Lord and so we know that repentance as we uh, highlighted the first epistle of John chapter 1 when we repent we restore that fellowship and this is what Jesus is saying to Peter here if I don't wash you right if I don't do it then you don't have this fellowship with me and or you have no part with me and so uh, if I can put it to you this way that there is nobody that can wash you but the Lord Right? There's nobody that can get these things. Uh, and many times uh, the thing that ails us is on the inside where we can't reach it. Right, And so we, we have a need uh, to call on the name of the Lord and ask for his forgiveness. So Jesus completed the task of washing their feet and then taught the lesson they were to learn. Humble service motivated by love. He had modeled it. And if he could do it, uh, then so could they. He was not uh, uh, instituting a ritual to be continued, but was teaching them to humbly serve others. I would also give you uh, Galatians chapter uh, 6 when you have time to look at that. So our salvation is eternally secure, but we need to present our lives to him daily for the purpose of cleansing so that we uh, become more like him. Uh, it is then that we can obey his command to humbly and lowly, lovingly uh, serve others. So we have to think about this thing that, that when we are cleansed of our sinfulness by the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it is replaced with forgiveness. It is replaced with power. It is replaced with a different attitude. Uh, a different mindset. It is replaced with a uh, uh, actual, uh, actionable, obedient service. So God doesn't just cleanse you and not put something there. He puts something there. He washes that uh, uh, away, that sinfulness. And this is what Jesus is doing for his disciples. Uh, uh, he is washing uh, uh, the filthiness from their feet, so they their walk can be clean uh, whatever they stepped in Jesus wiped it off he washed it off whatever they got themselves into Jesus took it up on himself uh, uh, to wash their feet he didn't ask them uh, he didn't browbeat them about where they had been and what they had stepped in and where they had walked away from him he didn't do that he just began to wash their feet 
to forgive them for where they had been and what they had engaged in and to, to present clean feet, right? Present clean feet. And this is something that you will see as I gave you over into uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, but it's important to understand what the Lord is doing with us uh, 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 as disciples and followers of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, another thing that uh, uh, God is uh, uh, adding to us when he washes away our sinfulness is Christian character. We are looking more. I don't know if you've noticed yourself lately. Uh, I don't know if you've looked in the mirror uh, long enough to see the fact that you are not the same. You are not what you used to be. You are not doing the things that you used to do. You are not going the places that you used to go. You have more love in your heart for your fellow man. The reason why is because your feet have been washed. The reason why that you are not the same is because you've experienced this Passover. God tucked you away, right? God tucked you away while the death angel was taking everybody else out in your circle and, and, and taking all of these individuals. But he left you for a time such as this. And if you are not saved today, this is a chance of a lifetime to accept this washing, to accept this salvation, and then experience the daily cleansing of having your feet washed or the daily experience of having your sins forgiven the things that 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 you are not strong enough to deal with at this time but as over the course of time God will make you stronger right through this washing and then the expectation is is that we continue or that we begin to do this with others who need this kind of assistance why does the biblical principle of functioning as a servant challenge believers it's a very good question because it causes us to act in such a way or conduct ourselves in such a way that allows us to see ourselves and sometimes we don't like to see ourselves we don't like to see uh, uh, what God has done in our lives we like to present ourselves as the finished product or as those who are polished as brass but we are a work in progress and so this is the challenge for us today uh, to uh, forgive to wash someone else's feet don't be ashamed to share your experiences where the Lord have brought you from don't be ashamed to recount the fact that you were filthy at one time but the Lord washed you uh, don't be ashamed to testify to the fact that that God delivered you somebody needs to hear that testimony somebody needs to understand that you were washed and and they may come running asking what must they do to be saved but we have to put it out there and so Jesus was able to show his disciples that if he could get down on his knees and wash his disciples' feet, this was where they walked. It wasn't where he walked. It wasn't what he got himself into. It's what they got themselves into. And he was willing to take that on. And we should tell people about that. That, that, that give God the glory for washing you. Don't be ashamed of that experience. But it is a challenge for us sometime to we forget where the Lord have brought us from. We forget that God was good to us. We forgot that we were in that house unworthy and the death angel was 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 just running rampant through the land and God spared your life and allowed you to transition from a sinner to a saint and now you don't want to tell anybody and you don't want to wash anybody else's feet then we have missed the purpose of this of this teaching last outline a new kind of love a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, 
if ye have love for one another. So back over into what I read to you earlier as in uh, verse 15, we were asking the question about who should we uh, 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 who should we uh, provide this example to? Or as Jesus says, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. We have the answer in these two verses. It has to be with one another. It has to be with our fellow man. It has to be with the world at large. It has to be among the people of God. It has to be an illustration uh, uh, that we have internalized this that we are able to do uh, for one another as we have received. That is very important and I think this is self-explanatory uh, uh, that we should love one another, right? We have received something and we're required to give something, right? Jesus gave his disciples a charge to follow his example as he faced the supreme sacrifice he was about to make for them. These men would survive after his departure if they obeyed his command to love one another. This was not a new command from the biblical standpoint. I want you to look at Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5, Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18, and Matthew chapter 22 verses 34 through 40. But it was new in the sense of the motive behind it. Their love for each other and others was to be based on his example of selfless and sacrificial love. Demonstrating his kind of love would also identify them as belonging to him. And so we want to stop right here, but we want to um, encourage you today to embrace this teaching. Don't forget your Passover. Don't forget your story. Don't forget where the Lord have brought you from. Don't forget the experiences. Every time you ask God to forgive you, he did that, didn't he? Every time you ask God to wash you, he did that, didn't he? And he will continue to do that for you each and every time that you ask him. Because the first epistle of John again says he's faithful. God has never missed a beat in our lives. He has blessed us. He has kept us from many seen and unseen dangers. But his command is clear. We are to love one another as he have loved us. We have to be willing to allow others to have this Passover. Because we have experienced that Passover in our lives. We have to continue to embrace those who have walked off the path. And they have gotten themselves dirty. It's incumbent upon us to forgive them. And so wash their feet. I hope, trust, and pray that we've given you something to think about. As always, I want to close with prayer. Because prayer is essential for who we are. It's essential that we continue to call on the name of the Lord. It's essential that we continue to embrace prayer as a way that we can communicate with God. As a, a scripture clearly tells us that man ought to always pray and not faint. Eternal God, our Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you for every blessing that you have bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you for the teachings of this lesson today. and I just want to thank you for just washing in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for washing us in your blood. Thank you for washing us in your word. Thank you for washing our hearts and our minds, our hands and our feet. And even as Peter said, wash me all over. You have done that and we are not the same. You have brought us from many seen and unseen dangers. You've cleaned us. Father, you have given us an opportunity of a lifetime. We have become 
children of God because of your washing, because of your cleansing. And Father, we pray that you would make this word applicable to our lives and that we would internalize and that, that we would begin to wash one another's feet with forgiveness, that we would continue and all begin to wash one another's feet with loving kindness and so draw them as you have drawn us. Father, we thank you for everyone in the sound of my voice. And, and I don't know what their circumstances might be, but I know that you are well aware of our circumstances and that you have never sleeping that you never slumber and that your eyes in every place beholding the evil and the good and we thank you for this lesson just making us aware of the Passover making us aware that we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb uh, making us aware that we are eagerly awaiting a Savior from heaven and so uh, and as he presents this church uh, to the Father there would be no spot blemish or any such thing because of your washing Father, we thank you for it, and we'll be so careful and mindful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. So again, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.